Good evening, everyone. This is Dari on World Streams Radio. Thank you to our listeners from all around the world for joining us tonight. If you'd like to learn more about World Streams Radio, visit our website at worldstreams.org. You can also find us on Facebook now at facebook.com slash worldstreams. Our guest tonight is musician and composer Richard Horowitz. Richard Horowitz is internationally known for creating a unique sonic language that fuses together his roots in classical jazz and electronic music with the intensity of trance music that he first experienced in Morocco. He plays keyboards, percussion, and the nai or ne, depending what country you're from. He has worked with tribal, classical, and popular musicians from North Africa to Indonesia and has collaborated with Susan Dayem since the early 80s. Richard has scored many feature films, receiving Golden Globe and Los Angeles Film Critics Awards for his work on The Sheltering Sky, directed by Bernardo Bertolucci, from the novel by one of my favorite writers, Paul Bowles. Hello there, Saeed. Hello and welcome, Richard. It's an honor to have you with us tonight. Well, thank you so much, Dari. Thank you, really. Hello, Dari, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us to our listeners from around the world. And good evening to you, Richard Horowitz, Kideir, Lebesedik. Kushi Bekher, Saeed. Kushi Bekher. Mandi Manselik. Marhaba Bik Ma'ana Liuma. Gadi Nguyen Stijwab. Stijwab Diyal Saa. Well, this is a welcome. We, finalement, this is a welcome to our Richard Horowitz here. Now, Richard, to your knowledge, as far as interest in world music, uh, when when did that start as far as uh, your understanding of world music and th- th- this term, the word world music? Well, let's see. I remember that uh, when I was in high school, I had a chemistry teacher from India, a woman who came dressed in a sari, and she lived on the school campus, and she used to play um, Indian music to us when we went over to her apartment. Mm-hmm. And that was I was probably about 15 at that point, and I remember it, uh, my parents brought home a Broadway show one time called Wait a Minute, which was which had a lot of South African music in it, and it was kind of like it was kind of like an early precursor to The Lion King. When I was younger, I must have been about 12, uh-huh. uh, and then uh, when I uh, moved to Paris. In 19, uh, well, when I went there for the first time in 1966, I, I heard a lot of different music, and then I was living with a Moroccan psych, psychoanalyst, a student of Jacques Lacan's in Paris, and in 1969, and he took wow. me all around um, Paris at that point, showing me things, and then he hooked me up with his family in Marrakesh, and I hitchhiked to Marrakesh from Paris. <laughs> and how and old were you at the I time? Was, I was uh, 20. Twenty. Did you have a musical background before, or was this the beginning of your musical career? Well, I, I started playing the piano when I was three, and Obviously, I remember yeah. I t- when I I remember touching the note E for the first time, and seeing okay. the color orange, and I had a lot of wow. syn- synesthesia experiences around that time, and you can read more about that <laughs> on my uh, MySpace page. There's a very funny blog that mentions that. It's in the story about going to a Japanese acupuncturist. Um, well, hopefully that our listeners now actually would like to hear about it, if possible, too. The color well, I, actually, it's the kind of stuff I'm not even sure I can talk about on the air. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting, but it's, a, it's kind of a big digression. But, but on the positive side, I don't really digress. What I do is I do sympathetic, as in the unstruck sympathetic chord, the string that... that that rings when another string is struck. So I do sympathetic, synchronistic segues, not digressions. Segues. <laughs> wow. Now, for somebody who is not musically inclined, the word segue, what does it mean? Oh, well, it means when you move from one thing to the next in a kind of oblique way that kind of um, it mutates as opposed to uh, jumps across a line or totally is out of context. 
Wow. Now, as far as trance music, you're interested in, did it start at the age of 20 when you first visited Morocco? Yeah, that's when all of a sudden I kind of realized what music was really used for. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, there's the difference between all the music that you hear when you're growing up in the West and the music in Morocco. Now, I could go in to talk for the rest of the show about that, if we like. That's a pretty interesting topic. Yeah, and, and I think the understanding there is, uh, here you are, you were trained to play piano since the age of three, and then you came into this just a completely different world where music is actually used for practical reasons, right? Right. Well, I'm not saying that the Western music isn't healing as well, and I'm not, uh, and there are plenty of geniuses within the Western musical tradition but I'm, I, one of the best ways I can explain it is using some sort of uh, Western um, metaphors. And I just, I just gave this talk at the uh, Abu Dhabi Film Festival last year about, uh, it was called the Cosmic Symphony. And actually, symphony is the wrong word, uh, because yeah. the symphony is still Western. Uh, but that right. was the name of the article in Scientific American that I was, that I was uh, using and explaining in that talk, and I'll, I can tell you a little bit about that because it's pretty interesting. So basically, yes. I was on the plane going someplace in February 